In this video, I want to go through my process for creating offline hillshade maps from this USGS National Map Viewer application. So it's a four-step process. The basic process is you use this web viewer here to set up your map. What do you want your map to look like? And then you do a screen capture of this visible part of the map. The third step is you calibrate or geo-reference that image screen capture with the latitude and longitude of the map. And then the fourth step is you import that into your mobile device for offline use. So the first step is you need to set up your map this is the base map, so you want to zoom in and use the base map to do your navigating. Because once you go to one of the specialized layers, you will quickly become lost. So one thing to watch out for is the base map, you can only go into 16. So if you try to zoom past zoom level 16, you don't see anything because the base map doesn't support zoom levels past that point. So you want to get here to zoom level 16 or Anything zoomed out from there is fine, but you're going to come over here to the layer list, which is this stack of layers, and these layers are ordered top to bottom. That's the bottom layer, that's the top layer. These are layers just like if you've used Photoshop or GIMP or any of these photo editing programs where you can put things on different layers. So the layers that I'm mainly interested in are the hillshade and the multi-direction hillshade. And these are part of what's called the 3D elevation program. All of these 3D EP items are based on LiDAR data to create a 3D elevation model. And these things like hillshade are then generated off of that 3D model. But this is the basic hill shade, and then you've got this multi-directional hill shade, which is multiple light sources, where this regular hill shade is just a single light source. And if you look at the multi-direction hill shade, you don't see anything because the regular hill shade is over the top of that layer. Anyway, what you want to do is zoom into your area of interest here. So for instance, I might want to zoom in here to this area. This is the, the hill with the geocache on top. Here's this old road that I found. This is the little trail down the side. And then this is the other trail I've been exploring over here. And this particular view shows that very clearly. So to set up your map, you could just use this. But there are some other things you might want to do. For instance, if you wanted to see streams, rivers, ponds, things like that, you can turn on this hydrography layer and you see you get the name and the, the rough location of Stevens Creek. You have to play around with these layers. They're all slightly different. This one, I think, has the advantage. Let's see if we zoom out a little bit. Yeah. The one difference that this has is you can see these purple lines. Those are watershed boundaries. So that might be interesting if, if that's something you're looking for. So another thing you might want to add to help interpret this hillshade data is you can add elevation contours. So these are the contours that are on the normal topo map. And there you see they pop up and you get the elevation and then the contours showing you, you know, the lay of the land, basically. Now, another thing you can do is there's this auto contours. And let me show you that. Number one, you don't see anything because this layer is below that layer. So one of the things you can do here is move up. You can move that layer up. Now you can only move it up one layer at a time. Okay, now I've moved that layer above the hillshade layers. And you can see here the black lines are the auto contours generated from the LiDAR data versus the elevation contours here in the 
orangey color are from the topo map. And you can see there's a difference in them. Like the auto contours actually show this road. They have a little step here where this old road is, where the topo map contours don't show that. Now, one problem I have with the auto contours, with that black line, they're too contrasty. They, they overpower the details in the hillshade map. So one other thing you can do is change the opacity down. I like to get down here maybe around 20%, and you can see they fade out. So you can just barely see the contours. They're there, but they don't overpower the hillshade data. So anyway, that's basically setting up your map. Get your map set up the way you want to get it set up. The one other thing to do here is you need to decide what zoom level to get the details you're looking for versus how much area you want your map to cover. So it's a trade-off. Here at zoom level 18, you get a lot of detail, but you don't cover as much ground. For my use, I find zoom level 18 gives me the best combination of detail versus area. If you go over 18 here, you get a little more detail, but you can see it's, it's pixelated. So I find zoom level 18 gives you the most detail before it starts to pixelate. You get about a half mile or eight-tenths of a kilometer side to side or east to west, and you get about two-tenths of a mile or three-tenths of a kilometer north to south. If you zoom out, now you have about a mile east to west and, and four-tenths north to south. So the next step is we're going to create a screenshot of this screen. So you want to do this on your highest resolution display on your system need to get the coordinates of this map view that you've set up. And I found the best way to do that is if you use this tool here. It says spot elevation, but this is the best way to get the latitude and longitude, it turns out. So you have to click on that. You have to activate it. And then you come down to this corner here you want to get right in the corner as close as you can. It's kind of hard, but click there and it'll pop up. Spot elevation gives you the elevation, but it also gives you decimal degrees and degrees minute second. Actually, I think the decimal degrees is a little easier to work with, but you can grab both of them here. The nice thing is you can copy and paste. Yeah, you can't move that out of the way. But you can come up here, and you've got to do the same thing in the other corner. So click up there. Yeah, there we go. So you get the same spot elevation for this corner. And again, you want to go in there and copy. You can copy one or the other. I'm just copying both here so we can see it. But then you want to clear that. And again, you've got everything right here, too, if you wanted to copy this data that would work as well, but then deactivate that, close that. One of the reasons you need to do these two corners is because they're open. This corner down here has this little map overview hotspot, and you probably don't want that. It blocks your view. Okay, so what I like to do is I keep a text file for all of the maps that I make, and this is one that I just made of this area. I like to record the zoom level that I created the map at, and then also the file name that I'm going to give to the map, and I'll talk about that a little later. And then I like to separate out the north, west, south, and east coordinates or extents of the map, because that's the order that you put the coordinates in in the calibration program. The issue is when you're capturing the coordinates, this is the southwest corner and then the northeast corner, but the calibration program wants the northwest corner 
and the southeast. So I find it best to straighten those out in my text file. So you can see right here, for I captured these two coordinates here. I just did the degree, minute, seconds because it's easier to see. Your biggest number for latitude is going to be the north. So 37, 17, 11. So that's my north extent. And then the other one is 37, 16. That's my south extent. It's a lot easier to do it here. And then you can just enter these numbers directly. Now in this map that I made a little bit later, I actually use the decimal degrees which is easier to work with in the calibration program because you've only got one number. You just grab this, copy it, paste it into the calibration program. But it's a little bit trickier to work with the decimal degrees. So you have to look here, 37289, but you have to compare 28975 to 28612. You've got to look several decimal places down to figure out which number is bigger. So on Windows 10 and above, if you hit the Windows key and V, you bring up the clipboard, you can activate clipboard history, and it will retain all the copies that you've put in the clipboard. And then you can just come down here and click on this copy or that copy, and it'll paste all of this text in. So you want to paste in this one, and then you paste in that one. And that's how I got these figures here. I just pasted in the decimal degrees and the degrees, minutes, seconds. The other option would be, like I showed you in the spot elevation, it shows you the two points that you've recently selected, and you can copy the text out of there. I think that one had the decimal degrees and then the elevation, so you could copy that one too. Just do one copy if you don't want to do the multi-clipboard history. But yeah, you've got a few options to get these coordinates. You just need to get the coordinate of that corner and the coordinate of this corner and that'll be used two steps down the road. But now, anyway, you're ready to do your screen capture. So I'm using Firefox web browser, and I'm using the FireShot screen capture tool here. You could probably use most any screen capture tool, but you need one that does capture selection because you need to just capture the area of interest. So you want to go from this corner up to that corner because you don't want to get the menu bar and all the scroll bars and all that stuff. So you want to try to get the, the corners of the window that you got the coordinates for in the previous step. And then you're going to do save as image. And when you save the image, you want to give the image a reasonably descriptive file name. Yeah, so with your screen capture file name, you want to come up with some sort of naming convention that will work for your area, what you're using these for. Originally, I just started out calling these things just what they were. This was a map I made last year. I had an old road that I called the Middle Road, and then it was on the Grizzly Flat Trail, GF, and then I had one and two were the single light hillshade and then the multiple direction hillshade. Make two maps of each area, and that's pretty easy to do. I just do a screen capture with the single hillshade. And then I do the exact same screen capture, but I turn on the multi-direction hill shade. I started out doing that, but I started getting so many maps that it gets hard to manage because in the OSM and or Osman application, you just get a list of file names when you go to select a map. And if you have like a hundred files in there, You've got to scroll and search, and what was this called? And so what I found actually works well, for me anyway, is I adjusted the file names a little bit, 
what I did was I put a two-letter code at the beginning of the file name for the name of the trail that I will use to get to that map. So I have the Canyon Trail, CT, or the Grizzly Flat Trail, GF. I put that at the beginning so that all the Canyon Trail maps, those hopefully will all sort together in the menu when you go to pick one. And then I just have names after the CT for what I want to call that maps. I have this slide map, which is the landslide area. I made one up here for the Gold Mine Creek road. So anyway, yeah, you've got to come up with the name of a map, and that's what I put here in my text file. So I record the zoom level, the base name of the file. This one, there's ct-slide, and then I'll have a 1 or a 2, depending on which hillshade layer I have enabled. And then I'll have the extents of that map. Yeah, so the, the idea here is... If I need to go back and fix a map, I can get my view back to these coordinates and then recreate this map without having to do everything again. So I know what zoom level, I know what the northwest and the southeast corners were. If I need to go in, oh, I want to add the, the water, the hydrography layer, or I want to add the contours. So anyway, there's that step, and then let me show you the next step 